Hallelujah. Well, those that have come tonight, you're going to receive some uh, wisdom and revelation. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? What I'm going to teach you tonight is going to, probably going to be one of the most important things you'll ever hear in your life in Christianity. And uh, because authority is so important in our life, and that's what we've been studying, but without submission... There is no authority operating in your life. You need to understand that. The reason more people, they wonder why is authority, how come people, I hear authority, and I hear people preach we got authority, but how come it's not working in my life? And the reason for that is there's a lack of submission in your life or people's lives. And so we want to take a look at that. I, uh, this may be the last time I teach here <laughs> uh, because of this. Uh, <laughs> I got you. All right, let's uh, uh, start out with a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you tonight for your precious word, and we do thank you, Father, for those that have come. Thank you, Father, you anoint the ears of the hearer. Anoint me to teach, O oh Lord, my teach the divine oracles of you. We just thank you, Lord, that you'd give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Hallelujah. That we may know what is the hope of your calling for each and every one of us. Enlighten us, O oh Lord, concerning your word and concerning this subject tonight of submission and authority. And we just thank you, Father, that I would speak with clarity and that the word would be heard with clarity. And we just thank you for it tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. If you can agree with that, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Open up your Bibles, if you will, to the book of James. Glory to God. So there's a lot of confusion in the body of Christ. And the result of most of it is from the lack of submission that goes on in churches. The lack of submission to authority. Many families lack understanding of this authority. They don't know how to submit. And I want to tell you something about in marriages. Young people, when they get married, they, they have a hard time submitting. The wife has a hard time submitting to the husband. The husband has a hard time loving his wife the way he's supposed to love her. Just, get, just marriage itself. But not only that, in the workplace, I mean, in the workplace, people not submitting to, to the, the authority that's above them that cost them their job. Children not submitting to their parents. But uh, opens up the door for rebellion. Rebellion's considered in God's eyes the same as witchcraft. So if you got children rebelling in the home, what you got in the home? You just release the spirit of witchcraft in the home. How many of y'all want that in your home? So I surely don't. How many of y'all want it in your life? I surely don't. Hallelujah. And then in 1 Corinthians 14, 13, we see that God's not the author of confusion, is he? So if there's confusion in a place, if there's confusion in a church, if there's confusion in a family, if there's confusion in a workplace, where's it coming from? Where's it root? It's not coming from God. Who's at the root of it? The devil. The enemy. So we need to have understanding of submission and authority. So turn to James, and we're over in James chapter 4. James chapter 4, hallelujah. One of the greatest things that happened to me and my wife, once we came over and got out of the, the mess we was in, the drug movement and all that mess, was we went to marriage seminars, went to a bunch of them. And uh, in that you learn your proper perspective as far as the scriptures go. See, everything's been designed by God. Everything... The way that we're to live this life is designed by God. And you know, they, the, there's a lot of people say, well, there's so many different definitions and, and, and different ways that you can interpret this and interpret that. I want to tell you why God is not the author of confusion. 
Now here's the thing. You can get confused if you got three people teaching the same scripture and teaching it different ways. Hello? How much confusion, you know, the thing about tongues? Now, in, in the, the churches that don't speak in tongues, they say that tongues causes confusion, so it must not be of God. Yeah, they blame it on us. The tongue talkers. Amen? We look at it a totally different way, don't we? Because the Bible plainly states to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to be baptized with the Spirit of God. Very plain that Jesus meant for the church, every born-again believer to be baptized in the Holy Ghost so that we could have victory in this life. Amen. And those that have received that, you understand that, don't you? Because the Word of God opened up. I know it did to me now. I only know what happened to me. The Word opened up to me like never before. And I had such a hunger for it because now I could understand it. Hallelujah. So it is so important that we understand about submission and authority. Now in James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Uh, starting in verse 6. Hallelujah. Now I'm, so, I'm a slow talker compared to our brother on Sunday. Hallelujah. You might even be sitting there waiting for me to say something else instead of trying to catch up. <laughs> verse 6 says, But he giveth more grace, Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. I tell you what, we better back on up verse 1 and start there. From whence comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and can, cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not. Has anybody been there? Now I know I've been in churches and they'll say every prayer we've ever prayed has come to pass. Yeah. And I sit there and say, well that's a lie, especially if I've been there. <laughs> Amen. Because if I'm in your congregation, I know all your prayers aren't answered until my little girl's totally hope. Until everybody in the place. Holy hope. There is no cripple. There is no halt. There is no sick whatsoever. If every prayer has been answered. Amen. Parking lot's not full of uh, big Cadillac, es what do they call them? Escalades. Convertibles. All the big rides. Hallelujah. A Rolls Royce from my brother here. Because I guarantee you everybody would like to have a, a step up on their vehicles, wouldn't they? Probably even ask for them. I don't know how you are, but I'm kind of looking at a Lincoln myself. You know what I mean? I'm on, I've always had a Lincoln or a Cadillac, and I, I got out of that. Now I drive a Paw Paw van, and I don't like it. <laughs> Amen. But I'm a Paw Paw, right? <laughs> But I like this one right here that drives that convertible. That Mustang. Being cool. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ask and receive not because you ask a misc that you may consume it upon your lust. This scripture right here, I've I, I preached a message on this all of itself. You adulterers and adulteresses. The word adulterer is not even in the original Greek. But adulteress is. Why? The church is what? Has a feminine gender, doesn't it? And so if we're in the church, it's considered to be a feminine gender. And adulterers or, or adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Everybody say enemy of, God. enemy of God. Now I want you to get a hold of that. 
enemy of God. Friendship with the world is enemy, makes you an enemy with God. Woo! I want to tell you what, that right there is some heavy stuff. But James does not pull any punches. That's the thing about old James. He don't pull anything. But I don't know about you. I don't want to be an enemy of God. How many of y'all think you'd receive anything from God if, if, if you're an enemy of God? Heavy stuff. Moving right along, though. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Isn't that something? That the Holy Ghost lusts for your time. Because the church as a whole spends too much time with the things of the world instead of spending time with God and spending time with the Holy Ghost. I mentioned last week, just as I closed, about communion with the Holy Ghost. He is, he lusts for our time because we're willing to give more time to the world than we are to him. Let me tell you something, the Holy Ghost will not be satisfied until he's got all your time. But I got to work, hey. You deal with the Holy Ghost on that. You can still work. Amen. And spend time with the Holy Ghost while you're working. Huh? He's there whether you enjoy it or not. But are y'all with me tonight? But he giveth more grace. How many of y'all could use more grace? He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Who make, he's already made the first step, and I ain't saying you need to draw nigh to me. You need to give me your time. In that giving of time, that's like walking in the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. That's what we're dealing here with, lusts of the flesh. Sure is quiet in here. And that's good, huh? No, I'm fine. I'm glad that you are listening. Clean your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double-minded. You know, we covered that in the first chapter about being a double-minded man. Should a double-minded man receive anything from God? No. No. Can't be double minded. You got to be single minded to receive from God. I got a message I preach called the one way street, man, and that's what you got to be. If you want to really blow and go and experience the fullness of the things of God, you got to be single minded, heading toward giving yourself over to God. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's really a little bit more uplifting. It's fact, 1 John 1, 9, thank God for it. If you confess your sin unto God, that takes care of the sin. But you cannot, just not spending time with God, see. Spending your time doing other things other than spending time with God. We lose sight of the fact, the only reason we are here on this planet it's to spend time with God. Period. It's the only reason we're here. To worship God. Spend time with God. Hallelujah. If we're going to walk in authority, there's going to have to be an all-out 
dedication to God and His Word. A submission to God. Everybody say, submit to God. God. Now see, that's that's a far cry from just showing up on Sunday mornings. That's a far cry from just uh, uh, reading a little bit of the Word. It's a far cry from posting something on Facebook that sounds spiritual. It's a far cry from posting those little pictures, which I love. There's a lot of good sayings I like to share, you know. Little one-liners, two-liners that are, I enjoy that. But it's a far cry from that, friend. We're talking about spending time with God. Every day, every day, every day. Submitting ourselves to the Word of God. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people that know a word that don't aren't doers of the Word. James covers that too, doesn't he? Be doers of the Word, not hearers only. Now, let's look at some terms here that we want to go over. One term is the word proud. The word proud means showing oneself above others. It's in a bad sense. Uh, Arrogance, disdain, haughty. All those terms for proud. The word humble. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Low lying, low degree, lowliness of mind. Everybody say lowliness of mind. Of mine. Then we got the word submit. I like this word in the Greek. I always have. It is a compound word. Hupo and echo. Hupo always means under. Echo means to yield. To yield under. Hallelujah. Submission it simply means to yield under. It's not a negative term. See, you start preaching on submission, and, and, and a lot of times women go crazy. They just want to keep. I ain't submitting to that. Amen. But God designed it that way, and there's a reason for that. Hallelujah. That's a good place to be, to yield under. We're, we're not talking about somebody walking over somebody. To yield to the authority in the church is just simply to yield under that authority. Like the pastor is over in this church, all I do is, I, I, man, we got a whole semester on this stuff when I was at Raymond. They drilled it at Keith Moore. Y'all ever heard of Keith Moore? He was my teacher in submission and authority. He said, don't even take notes. You don't even have to take notes. I, I want this in your spirit. I want you to sit there and hear this. And they drilled it in. And then they followed up the very next thing with ministerial excellence. And he hit almost the same stuff. Drilling into us about submission and authority. And when you go into your church, when you leave this campus and you go into a church, you submit to whatever that pastor wants, whatever he needs. You come underneath that. But I'm a Raymond graduate. That don't mean nothing. And that's exactly where they put it. That don't mean a thing. You go in there and you yield yourself. You go in there and get under authority. If you want authority. If you want to operate in it. Amen. Well, glory to God. I don't know about you. Now, this next word is something we can all shout about. And it's the word resistance. <laughs> resistance. Another one of those words I like, antihistamine. Have you ever wondered what, what does an antihistamine do? It, it fights, though, doesn't it? Comes against it. Stands against it. This word, antihistamine, of course, the word anti means, or anti, means to set against the histamine to cause to stand. You put them together and you got uh, to call to stand against, to resist. Now, let's go back and read James. Especially that part. 
where it says God resisteth the proud. But he giveth more grace, verse 6, wherefore he saith God resisteth. He stands against the proud. God, now if you want an enemy, you don't want God. But he says he stands against those that are full of pride. But, but he gives grace to those of a lowliness of mind. Amen. There was a book I bought one time, and they will forget it. It says, the way up is down. The way up in the kingdom is down. Isn't it what he told the disciple? The greatest in the kingdom shall be the servant of all. Hallelujah. Now, we're talking about authority, but we're talking about Without submission, without this yielding under, there is no authority. Yielding unto his word, yielding unto his word. God tells us how a church should operate. He does almost a whole chapter on how to operate a church. And, but you don't see those churches in operation. I hadn't been in one yet. Ours was close. But we tried to run it that way. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Let everybody have a tongue and interpretation, a prophetic word. Hallelujah. Let everybody flow in the presence and power of God. And I want to tell you something, that's hard to do, especially when you know a lot of the people. Amen? Amen? Of course, they wouldn't be getting the word anyhow. Well, I mean, they would not not a word from God. God's going to flow through who? He's resisting the proud, so he's not going to use them. Are they? He's resisting them. He's standing against them. Think about God standing against someone. That mighty right hand of his, that powerful right hand can be for you or against you. He can hold you back. So, nope. Don't come any closer. Hello? Well, Brother Lee, how about the grace of God? We talking about grace here, brother? He gives more grace. More grace to the humble. Hallelujah. So I don't know about you, I don't want him resisting me. But I'm sure I can take a look in my life and realize, hmm, this isn't going like I want it to. And I am a quick re- confessor of sin. If I sin, I'm quick on it. Y'all with me? If I talk about you, I'm going to get in my car and say, Lord, forgive me for doing that. I'm going to confess it unto God and get it under the blood. Are you with me? But... That doesn't keep, if I'm in pride, to keep God from resisting. I didn't write this book. Y'all do realize that. That's, I mean, what, what happens to I mean, authority, praise God. Well, if you want that authority, you better get ready to submit. Amen. Good preaching, brother man. Good preaching. Good preaching. Hallelujah. Look at verse 10 in James chapter 4. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And what will happen? He will lift you up as sounds better than resisting all day long. He will lift you up. Humble yourself. There's a song we used to sing about that. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. Amen. And he shall lift you up. Hallelujah. He'll lift you up. Well, isn't that what we want? To be lifted up by God. Can anything stop you when God's doing the lifting? No. Hallelujah. 
I told you this would free you up in that area so you can walk in authority. Because you're not going to hear a lot of this because most folks aren't going to preach on something like this. You probably would, but I bet you to it. But Amen. I know you would. And I probably wouldn't want to hear it. I probably wouldn't want to hear it myself. Hallelujah. Now, I want to read those same scriptures in the Amplified Bible over here in chapter 4. Look in verse 3. It says, You do ask God for them and yet fail to receive because you ask with the wrong purpose and evil, selfish motives. Your intention is when you get what you desire to spend it in sensual pleasures. You're like unfaithful wives having illicit love affairs with the world and breaking your marriage vow to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world takes his stand as an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that the scriptures are speaking to no purpose? It says, the spirit whom he has caused to dwell in us yearns over us. He yearns for the spirit to be welcomed with a jealous love. But he gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit to meet his evil tendency and all others fully. That is why he says God sets himself against the proud and the haughty. But he gives grace continually to the lowly. Those who are humble enough to receive it. So be subject to God. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him and he will flee from you. Stand firm against him and he'll flee from you. Everybody say stand firm. I want to tell you why. I say a lot of people uh, uh, speak to the devil and just think, oh, well, he's going to run off. We need to take a stand against him. When you've done all to stand, stand therefore. Clothed in the armor of God. Praying with all, all manner of prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So be subject to God, resist the devil, stand firm against him and he will flee from you. Come close to God and he will come close to you. Recognize that you are sinners. Get your soul hands clean. Realize that you've been disloyal, waving individuals with divided interests and purify your hearts for your spiritual adultery. If you draw near to God, be deeply penitent and grieve, even weep over your disloyalty. Wow. I don't even want to read this next part. I'm going to skip on to verse 10. Humble yourselves, feeling very insignificant in the presence of the Lord, and He will exalt you. He will lift you up and make your lives significant. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. amen. Now, that was just at the beginning. It gets better from here. <laughs> if you're not submitted to God, hang on, get ready. Tighten up your seatbelt. If you're not submitted to God, now what's the word submitted mean? To yield under. If you're not submitted to God, you're yielding. If you're not yielding to God, you're yielding to the devil and in rebellion. Church world. I mean, that's church world. Divide. If you're not yielding to the Lord, you're yielding to the enemy. When you're yielding to the devil, now get a hold of this. I want you to hear this. This is so important. So important that out of this, you understand 
This is not condo bondo. This is a liberating message. Are you with me? Condemnation and bondage. This is not... <laughs> This is not condo bondo. This is liberating. Because if you'll do this, you'll see authority operate in your life. Amen. Condemnation and bondage. Hallelujah. When you're yielding to the devil, get a hold of this. That means he doesn't have to submit to you because you're submitting to him. So the next time you make a decision to submit to his ways, and you know it because the Holy Ghost is in here going, don't do it. Don't do that. And you go ahead and do it. You done yielded to the devil. And now, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to take authority over him when you're yielding to him. The word. Repentance, number one. Confess your sin unto God. That's why I said, I'm, I'm not saying I don't miss it. I just say I'm quick to confess my sin unto God and get it under the blood. Because that word says in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sin unto God, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you and in the Greek, the original Greek, it means this. As if it never happened. How I many of y'all know God forgets your sin as far as the east is from the west? Gone! Over! He don't remember it. You might, but he don't. That's why you got to let that junk go. Forever. Because he has. Because he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. So when you miss it, be quick. Don't let the devil hold you in that condemnation and bondage state. Oh, I'm so unworthy. I can't believe I missed it again. I got over that 30 years ago. Had to. <laughs> or live in depression the rest of my life. I got it under the blood, and I've been doing it ever since. And do I miss it? Yes, I miss it. When people say, well, you know, you don't have to sin. You may not. <laughs> you know, and I'd love to not ever, ever miss it. Never miss the mark. But I'm not there yet. And I've been after this 30-something years, but I am this. A quick confessor of my sin. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something. Condemnation and bondage, and if you've ever said this, forgive me for doing this to you. <laughs> As a pastor of me. So there are people say, oh, bless God. If you hadn't repented of that and repent me to turn 180. Well, 1 John 1, 9 didn't say repent, did it? The word repentant ain't there. The word says confess your sin. Speak it out of your mouth to God and say, forgive me of it, Lord, I missed it. You don't have to repent of it. Well, what if you did it ten times? Well, how many times can I do it? You know what I mean? Before, people say, well, you need to repent of that and never do it again. Well, but I've done, done it a, a thousand times. What if I do it another time? I mean, where's, where is it? So I like to bring these things into the point where, well, where does God bring out the numbers game? And if God has forgotten the other thousand, I've never done it before. <laughs> Hello? Isn't that right? Either he's forgotten it or he hadn't. And if he hadn't forgotten it, I'm in a heap of trouble, boy. <laughs> and you are too. But thank God he remembers it. Everybody say it. No more. No more. So don't let the enemy, and don't you heap it on yourself either. Get it under the blood and move on. Amen? Because when I worked uh, years ago, once I came back to the Lord, my custom was, 
I'd chew those people out in the back. I was a sales guy, and they'd mess up order and, and l listen to me regularly. It was regularly. You'd go straighten out an account, get them buying again, and they'd mess up the first order. And they'd call you on the phone, and we had a door where we worked. You had a big warehouse. But then you had the front offices, and you had a little kitchen area with some cubicles here, and a door that swung both ways. You go, won't, won't, either way. And so I get right with God, trying to live right, and they mess up order. And, you know, you don't break habits overnight. Maybe you do. Some people can. I didn't go back drinking, smoking, all that. That was done. But this part of it had to be learned. And they done messed up an order, and I'm out that door. And it was a good Christian guy back there. Slow as Christmas. Now I know why he was slow, because I'm about that age myself, man. <laughs> now I understand much more clearly. <laughs> age will do that to you. And through that door I went. And the Holy Ghost went. And I went back through that door. And I chewed him out good, then the Holy Ghost done convicted me. I'm back through that door again. So, man, I'm sorry. I apologize. You got to understand, this is new to me. So. <laughs> and I'd be back in there, I'd be working in maybe five minutes past somebody else's call with a complaint. I'm going to call. He's just looking at me. And I walked back through that door, you know. <laughs> then the Holy Ghost got me again. Got to go back up no because I knew you got to go. On. I'm sorry, man. He, it got to be sometimes during the day he'd just nod at me when I come. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. He already knew what was going on. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm confessing my sin to God and apologizing to him, you know. It was just. I ain't got better. Yeah, you're right. It saved me a lot of door open. Because I can go, God. You know. And thank God he was a good Christian. He didn't hold it against me. Because he could have messed up every order I had. But he did. Amen. Well, where was I going with that? Where were we at? At the <laughs> Forgiving. Forgiving. Amen. Somebody say, I'm glad God forgives me. Hallelujah. And he forgives me and remembers it. No more. When you get a hold of that, that's going to be a great relief for you to know it's under the blood. And I've confessed it unto him. And if I missed it a hundred times in a day, remember what Jesus said to old Peter. How many times, Lord? Seven times seven? And what did Jesus say? Seventy times seven. That's 490 times. And I believe God meant it daily because I believe Peter probably broke that record. <laughs> I believe Peter probably had a chance at breaking that. And when he says 70 times 7, I believe Peter went, oh, praise <laughs> God. Jesus loves me, this I know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoever you submit to means that you are overcome by them. Jesus triumphed over the devil because he submitted to who? The will of God. All day, every day. He said, I don't do anything that I don't hear I don't see my father do, and I don't say anything I don't hear him say. Woo! Man, that's discipline. 
Man, that's submission, isn't it? So you got to understand, we have the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They're equal. But yet, the Father, the Son, or the Word, He was just the Word in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And they operate in sync. There's no jealousy there. It's just a flow. God, Jesus doesn't rebel against God. We don't ever see where Jesus rebelled against God. The only time we see anything close, and it wasn't a, a rebellion, it was his flesh crying out because his flesh was hurt. But not my will, but thine be done. And he, all the way to the cross. Hallelujah. This is good, isn't it? Jesus triumphed over the devil because he submitted to the will of the Father and did not yield to the devil. In John 14, 30, he said, For the prince of the world cometh and hath nothing in me. Now let me share this with you. I want you to think about this now. You might miss it, but God has set up a system that you can get cleansed of it and forgiven of it that fast. And it's gone. Amen. The devil may come back and say, yeah, but Brother Lee, you remember back in 64? You remember back in 74? You and that brother of yours? You... <laughs> Yes, oh yeah. Are y'all with me? And, and he tries to throw his stuff up, but you, no, no, it's under the blood, baby. Gone, over, I'm free of it. Hallelujah. And he remembers it, say it with me, no more. He don't remember it anymore. Now you need to understand, God, it's impossible for God to forget. He chooses not to remember it. He's all knowing. Y'all with me? If you do not yield to the devil, you can make him submit to you. But if you yield to the devil, you cannot exercise authority over him. He'll laugh at you. You don't dare go into a deliverance session and not know who you are in Christ. Seven sons of Siva did that, didn't they? And they ran over him and them and stripped them naked. How naked they got, I don't know, but it had to be a sight, though. Well, you figure they were the original spiritual streakers? <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at <Apple. laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you do not yield to the devil, you can make him submit to you. But if you yield to the devil, you cannot exercise authority over him. He'll laugh at you because you both know who you yield to. He knows that you yield to him. You ain't hiding it from God and you ain't hiding it from him. Moving right along. You are yielding to, to the one you are trying to exercise authority over. When you yield to him or you yield to God. But you yield to him and you're yielding to the one that you're trying to take authority over him, but you're yielding to his authority. 
That's how come. In a lot of cases, when somebody's down, you got to find somebody that's up. Spiritually. Are you with me? You can be down, you can be under a depression, discouragement, dismay, but you find somebody that's not down in the valley, that's up on the mountaintop, so they can drag your butt up there with them. <laughs> Amen. You know, Joe Medina, in his uh, that sermon that he has on the eagles, he tells about watching the eagles that had been in the valley dying when the other eagles would bring meat to them and feed them because they couldn't even want to feed themselves. Are y'all with me? Well, that happens to Christians. That happens to eagle Christians sometimes. That happens to people that have been walking the walk for a long time and they hit something major and the enemy strikes a hit. But we may be, hey man, I'm high as a kite on God right now. I feel good. I feel powerful. And go and pull them up. And drag them into church. Drag them into church. They may be kicking and screaming. But the ushers will help you. Pull them on in. (laughs) Pull them on in. Put them right up here up front next to Dan. Up here where the power is, up under the spout, where the glory comes out. Are you with me? How many of y'all been there? I've been in some times where I was down, and I made myself go. Nobody came and got me. But I'd make myself go. I'd go find me a meeting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we need this authority. That's why we need to endeavor to submit to authority. Uh, Submit ourselves unto the laws of the land. Submit ourselves unto the authority in a local church. Submit ourselves unto the word of God. Amen? Amen? So that we can flow in authority. Submission to authority will allow you to flow. And authority. That's why it was so appalling unto me. And if I step on somebody's toes, y'all go ahead and, I don't know, forget them. But uh, when I came into this church and I was hearing people call Pastor Rick, Rick, that ate at me. I wanted to go slap him upside the head. <laughs> Say, don't you know that's the pastor? You submit unto that man's authority if you're going to be in this church. That ain't Rick. That's Pastor Rick. Hello? Why? I understand authority. I understand it. That just means I yield under the authority that God has placed on the pastor's life. Are y'all with me? Oh, glory to God. That's just so good. Just good preaching. That's why it's important. If you want to flow in authority, you better learn to submit to authority. You got people, I want to tell you why, when it comes to the family, God himself set up the family. The man is the head of the wife. And the wife is the help meet to the man. Put the rocks down now. But that's the way God made it. And the woman is to serve the man and the man is to serve the wife. And to love the wife the way Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Do you see what I'm talking about? It's not a man lording it over the woman. Hallelujah. You can find that over in Ephesians what, five, six? Pardon me. Hallelujah. God, this is so good. Amen. 
Amen, brother. Good preaching, Brother Lee. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to get my amen and stuff. Even if I have to do it myself. Hallelujah. That's exactly right, my brother. Proverbs 32, 2. Now, I'm glad you brought that up because... Understand this, this is not talking about people that are unequally yoked. This is talking about people in church, Christian husband and wife. This book is to Christians, you know. Paul wrote most of his stuff to who? Matter of fact, he wrote it all to the church. Hallelujah. I agree, brother. Hallelujah. All right, we're about through here. When the devil has nothing over you, you can be bold. Jesus demonstrated this in his submission to the Father. He was able to triumph over the devil. We've all missed it in times past, but we can change the future. Tomorrow does not have to be like yesterday. Amen. If you've been missing it in the area and you're still confessing it unto God, that can change. Once upon a time, I rolled joints at night and smoked them first thing in the morning. I'd smoke a joint. Every day at 5 o'clock, I'd drink a drink. Johnny Walker Black. 5 o'clock, 5.30. And by the time I got home, I was drunk. And then I'd hit bars on the way home and get drunk there. Every day, every day, every day, but Saturdays and Sundays. Sundays I didn't drink a lick because it was the Lord's day. <laughs> but on I'm not going to drink on Sunday, buddy. <laughs> but, the, but on Saturday it was beer, all the beer I could drink. But Monday through Friday was... Johnny Walker Black. Well, my life was that way once upon a time. But you know what happened? It changed. I don't drink a, a no more. I don't smoke a, a no dope anymore. I don't snort the cocaine a no more. I don't do any of that stuff anymore. Are y'all with me? No. It changed. God changed me. And it changed me quick. It was amazing how quick God changed me. It's amazing how quick you can change when you study the Word five, six hours a night every night for about six months. You want to see yourself change? That'll change you. Why? You're sowing the Word. You're sowing the Word. You're sowing the seed of the Word. And you're producing a harvest. And God will produce a harvest in your life of that word. Amen. I didn't meditate on Leviticus either. You don't want that in your life. You don't want any of that junk in your life. Thank God I came across Brother Hagin. Who told us. Listen. The, the, the epistles are written to the church. So study the what's written to the church. Study the new covenant. Because that's what you will live by, is the new covenant. Are you with me? You hear a lot of Old Testament teaching, you're going to be under condo bondo, buddy. Heavy. Because it's by the old in the old is the new contained, but by the new is the old explained. You take the Pauline re revelation out, we can't understand hardly anything. He explained it. God revealed to him the mystery that had been hidden for ages and ages. Amen. And he revealed it to us like we saw in Ephesians 1. Two, three. Hallelujah. We're seated with him in heavenly places. Praise God. 
Glory to God. I want to tell you what. See, that's good revelation. This stuff that we're hearing from James, the epistle of James telling us. Listen, man. Get the pride out. Submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. And where's most of our trouble coming from? The enemy. We make a lot of our own, you know. He don't go out and spend all that, fill those credit cards up. I ain't seen the devil in line yet putting a card, anything on a card. Have you? Boy, that was quiet. I didn't even get a... Oh, man. Not even a... <laughs> Are y'all with me? Let me see. I, I got a close right here. Hallelujah. To submit to God, you've got to crucify the flesh. Galatians 5, 16 says this, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So how easy is it? Just walk in the Spirit. You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, how do I do that, Brother Lee? That's why we'll come back next week and Find out how. Everybody stand up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Did y'all get anything out of that? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So I submit my life unto God. And I resist the devil. Therefore he will flee from me. And I'm going to confess my sin unto God. When I miss it. And he will forgive me. He will cleanse me. As if it never happened. So Father, help me to forget. Cleanse my mind. Help me with that old memory. Help me to walk by faith. And not by sight. Help me to walk by faith. And not by sight. Hallelujah. And help me, Lord, to call things that be not as though they were. To call it things that be not as if they already are. I call myself healed in the name of Jesus. I call myself blessed in the name of Jesus. I call myself anointed in the name of Jesus. I call myself rich. Some of y'all just went, I don't know about that. But I tell you, you've got to call things that be not as though they already were. It's what God did with Abraham, wasn't it? That's what we need to do. Calling things. You need to call yourself anointed. You got to call yourself wealthy. You got to call yourself healed before you ever heal. Amen. Amen. You don't have to explain anything to anybody. What's wrong with you? None of your business. Well, I thought she was one of them there Christians. And you don't get sick. That's none of your business. Amen. You don't have to admit that you are. We just don't deny that we are. But I'm going to say what God says. Because I want to tell you what. If you're saying, out of the mouth, can't come, I'm sick and I'm healed. Hello? You're going to be one or the other, friends. Y'all with me? 